Chapter 1. Bloomings Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, having little or no money in my purse, and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. It is a way I have of driving off the spleen and regulating the circulation. Whenever I find myself growing grim about the mouth, Whenever it is a drizzly November in my soul, then I count it high time to get to sea as soon as I can. With a philosophical flourish, Cato throws himself upon the sword. I quietly take the ship. There is nothing surprising in this. If they but knew it, almost all men, in their degree, some time or another, cherish very nearly the same feelings towards the ocean with me. There now is your insular city of the Manhattos. Look at the crowds of water gazers there. What do you see? Posted like silent sentinels all around town, stand thousands upon thousands of mortal men fixed in ocean reveries. But uh, these are all landsmen, of weak days pent up in lather and plaster, tied to counters, nailed to benches, clinched to desks, how then is this? Are the green fields gone? What do they hear? But look, here come more crowds, pacing straight for the water, and seemingly bound for a dive. Strange! Nothing will content them but the extremest limit of the land. They must get just as nigh the water as they possibly can without falling in. And there they stand, miles of them, leagues of them, inlanders all. They come from... Lanes and alleys, streets and avenues, north, east, south, and west. Yet here they all unite. Tell me, does the magnetic virtue of all the needles, of the compasses of all those ships attract them thither? There's magic in it. May the most absent-minded of men be plunged into the deepest reveries. Why is almost every robust, healthy boy with a robust, healthy soul in him at some time or another crazy to go to sea? Why upon your first voyage as a passenger did you feel such a mystical vibration when first told that you and your ship were now out of sight of land? It is the image of the ungraspable phantom of life. And this is the key to it all. Okay, I spent all day <laughs> cutting up the uh, port side integral water tank port side of it uh this is like two days of work and uh see if it comes out i've uh, cut it in half now and i got one half out uh, i cut the half in half and i got the half half out and so let's see if this works That's really close. I think I'm gonna have to do one more cut. But that's okay, because it's not back up in there anymore. It's it's right here. It's so close. Come on. A few more cuts and uh, the piece was ready to come out. Okay, half of the integral water tank is out now. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Let me grab the light. I can just put it in there because it'll shine right through. Sweet. Okay. So, look at that. Ah, oh, it's open. So, where the beginning of that uh, storage thing is, I'll uh, put a stringer across there and that'll reinforce it. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely unfinished fiberglass up here so i'll probably sand that all back and uh repair any issues and um and then paint it with the uh, anti-mold paint and uh yeah still have this very forward section of the water tank to go and this half but uh now that i have more working space it should be a lot easier well, 
This has been the longest single job, I think, besides delivering the boat that I've had. And uh, hopefully I can finish it tonight. That would be awesome. As I con continue to cut pieces out of the uh, integral tank, I uh, lost my hearing, so uh, and it actually took a couple days to recover. So I started wearing uh, hearing protection. Definitely should have started with that, and uh, but made good progress and uh, actually started getting pieces out. Okay, so I think I can get it out now. <laughs> um, it's like 10 o'clock at night now, so it'd be great if it could come out without another cut. <laughs> So close. It's an issue here. <laughs> oh wait, maybe swell came out the other way around. If I can get it around. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Okay, now that they're both out see all around cool access to the hull uh, still have to get the rest out of the front but it's not much it's just kind of like a triangle and I think it's tabbed in in there yeah you can see those two tabs back there that one on the right on the starboard side is uh, cracked that one looks okay i'm wondering if i just cut those if if that'll drop it but i i don't think i can get at them because the anchor locker is closed at the bottom but we'll see i can just about fit in there now <laughs> in here now uh just just a wee bit shy of being able to completely fit in here um gives you your kind of idea how much space is under you Yeah. Okay, I'm making good progress on this forward part of the tank, and uh, I realized that the only part that it's attached to is uh, up in the chain locker, and the fiberglass along here is like paper thin along the sides of this triangle bottom, which is the top part of the tank. So definitely gonna have to add a stringer or something back in here. Um, yeah, uh, some people are requesting that I that I make extra space for more chain because I do want 300 feet of chain uh, at least. So yeah, so as you can see, this this is this is like paper thin. Yeah, that's all it took. It's just like. It's totally like super super thin which is why the v-birth gets so freaking wet is because this is soaking there's so much water in here and rust stains get everywhere okay I've got the bottom of the chain locker out basically oh man I can't believe they just had that going into the water and stuff that's uh, not good and, and an adult. Oof, okay. Yep, definitely gonna need some reinforcement here. Uh, this drips up here, so that, I mean, I'm tearing that all up anyway. Just same old story with all the deck hardware, really. But, uh, yeah, seeing the other underside of the aluminum bowsprit. Um, yeah, you can see some water coming in on the, uh, aft starboard side interesting yeah Whew. well that's the last piece of the water tank a couple days worth of work but uh, got this nasty thing out that's crazy 
All right, I was able to get it out when I cut it in half. It smells really bad, so maybe that'll solve the problem of the smell. I think that's probably the salt water and, um, yeah, just salt water stuff dying on it. <sighs> so, yeah, glad to have that out. Still need to know what's going on in there. And I still need to at least chop a little bit off the top there. Probably down to a uh, line there or something. Um, and then glass it against the hull um, and put drainage in there. But bottom line, need to get the hardware. Wow. Yeah, there's some delamination of the fiberglass in here along the uh, yeah, along the hull and the bottom there. So I'm gonna have to knock that back and maybe add another layer or if it looks good then, yeah, well, you know, that's a high impact area. So maybe I'll add another layer there. Maybe that's where uh, Latati's hit that thing in the water and uh, caused some of it inside to delaminate. But we'll see when we knock it back. Wow. Oh, I'm so done being in the V-Birth, but uh, I still need to have a couple of jobs left to do in here. Uh, hopefully the next episode will be the last one uh, demolishing stuff, and then we can finally start rebuilding. Well, if you stuck around for the whole journey with this uh, integral tank, thanks for watching, because... Man, that was a long, arduous task, and, um, but I'm super excited now that, um, I can see the hull and see what's on the underside, and, uh, I have a path forward with, uh, repairing that and putting stringers in and making it all nice down there. Haven't decided what I want to do with the forward area if I want to have a stringer vertical, which will extend the anchor locker quite substantially or if I want to make the bottom there again. Um, I guess a vertical one with maybe like a pedestal kind of would work to help the, still support the lining. So maybe I'll do that. But I, I've, got, I've got a little bit till I have to think about that too much. Hopefully next episode will be the last demolition episode and then we can start repairing things and um, building things back. Like I mentioned in the past two episodes, if uh, we haven't hit 100 patrons yet, then uh, I'm still giving away these t-shirts to every new patron, uh, up to 100, but probably more. If if more people sign up, I'll, I'll probably still send out more. Um, so that's the end of this video. I hope you liked the uh, extended intro. Um, Moby Dick is a huge inspiration of mine and um, one of my favorite audiobooks to listen to. Uh, the Doug Brown recording is especially good because he East Coast, East Coast accent, and uh, I, just, I like the way he does the voices. And um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.